Hello and welcome everyone. Today we're doing number 27, remove element. This algorithm was given in a coding interview in Microsoft. 27 is a great continuation from 26, the last episode, because we're going to have pretty much the same idea, same algorithm, and um, you're going to get a feel for this kind of algorithms. All right, once again, there's quite a lot of text, so I'm not gonna read everything. I'm just going to write here down what's the most interesting and important part that you need to notice. So the first thing that you need to take into consideration is this. Do not allocate, let me just, extra space for another array. And you must do this by modifying the input array in place with constant extra memory. That's pretty much it. And of course, when we're modifying it, we're just gonna go from one loop, meaning that I'm gonna have a time complexity of, I'm just gonna write them down. Time complexity is going to be big O of N, linear, and space complexity is going to be constant because we're not allocating anything. All right, and I'm gonna give a couple of examples, even though that you can find them here. So this is how the judge is going to be testing your solution. There's quite a lot of text, I don't wanna go through it, but I'm gonna write the array here and can I just zoom in? Oh, that's that's too much. All right, let's say that we have the array two, three, three, and two. And what am I going to be supposed to do? I'm gonna be required to remove all occurrences of three, for example. So I'm just gonna have value equal three. And I need to return two, two, and then I can have gibberish here that's not gonna be interesting because I'm going to return how much elements does the judge look. So I'm going to return here, for example, two because I'm just going to take into consideration the two elements from the array, meaning that everything else is going to be neglected by the judge. So one more example, if I have one, 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 three, 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 four, five, one, and then I need to remove, for example, value three, I'm gonna be expected to return this array. Yeah, this with the int, right? So this is going to be modified and the whole array is going to look different. So the whole array is going to be looking like this, right? But this is not interesting to us because I'm just going to say, look at the first five elements. That's pretty much it. So I'm gonna be placing an algorithm here. I think that I'm going to just record another video in Paint and just post it here down below, even though I need to take into consideration that I'm not gonna have space. But um, the whole idea is the following. So let me just write down something simple. One, two, two, and one. And I'm gonna pass it with a value two. And I think that it's going to be very nice if I manage to place the algorithm down below. If you see it, then it means that I've worked things out and I managed to successfully do it. And I want to remove the occurrences of two and two, right? So the number two. What I want is to take two pointers, the first one and the second one are gonna start both at the same spot as soon as one is not equal to the value that I have provided, I'm just going to say pointer first is gonna be equal to pointer second, and then I'm going to increment pointer first. By that way, here I'm going to change one to one, and I'm gonna have first pointer here in two. And as soon as my first pointer comes to one again, I am going to change this to one and I'm gonna remove first pointer and I'm gonna place it here. After that, we're going outside of the loop and I'm just going to return the first pointer. Then I'm gonna have the array, which is going to be, in this case, one, one, two, one. And I'm going to send a return point. Return point is gonna be equal to two, meaning that look at only the two elements at the array and they are going to not have the value that I have provided. Right, let's go to solution and see working example. Now the first thing that I usually do is do a check. So if nums.length is equal to zero, I'm just going to return zero because that's nothing. I don't need to work through that. But this is actually not gonna be necessary if down here you see that nums length is going to be 
bigger or equal than one. In this case, we might have a nums length zero, so that's why I'm just going to return zero here. So let's go with, did I name them starting index or start? I don't remember. I'm just gonna go with starting point. This is gonna be zero. And now I'm just going to make the loop that I have been talking about. So for in second point, this is gonna be zero. I want them to start at the same place. Second point is going to be less than nums length. And then I'm just going to go with the incrementation. All right, good. Let's write down the array here just to see it. One, two, two, one. And as I said, the first starting point and the second point are going to be here. And if the thing is not equal to the value, right? So if nums of second point is not... Uh, my bad, is not equal to value. So here we're not equal to value. I'm just going to say nums of first, oops, starting point is going to be equal to nums of second point, All right? So one is going to be equal to one. And then after I do the arithmetic, I'm just going to go increment with one, meaning that I'm going to say plus plus over here. And this should be this should be actually good to go because we're going to do the calculation and then we're going to increment. All right, and now I'm going to be here, 2, 2. Then I'm going to have 2, 2. Then I'm going to have 1. This is not equal to value since our value was 2. And then I'm just going to say this point is going to be equal to num second point, meaning 1. And I'm going to increment the starting point to this 2 over here. Of course, I'm going to return three. So actually, zero, one, two. Look at the first two elements in the list. Okay, so the final part for me is to return the starting point. And hopefully, I'm just going to remove this. And in fact, I can remove this. And I think that is good to go. Let's run the code and see if this is gonna work out. Actually, I'm not entirely sure that I don't need the brackets over here, but usually when you have one lines like that, you don't, so. All right, great. Use example test cases. If everything passes, I'm just going to push it to the judge, as usual. Submit. And let me just close this. All right. It's running quite slow. I think that's because of my computer. Let's just run again. Keep in mind that when you see a runtime of this, it means that either you have network issues or either the server is under pressure because this is not very reliable. All right, well, that's the algorithm. So we, once again, let's go through the time complexity. We're just doing one loop from zero to N, depends on how big the array is. So the time complexity, Oops, time complexity is going to go to linear and space complexity. We're not allocating any more memory because of this array. We're just doing uh, in, in program, so in place, that's the word. We're just fixing the array as we go meaning that I have one, one, two, two, and then I'm fixing that to, for example, two, two, one, one, and I'm fixing the same array. I'm using the same memory, and that is why I have a constant memory space. Okay, that was it. Thank you for watching, and stay tuned for the next one where we do it in JavaScript. Goodbye.